Hey, what's up? It's Mike D for Mike D's Marketing Mix. And the uh, show is brought to you by CyberspaceToYourPlace.com and ReputationDomination.Ninja, also known as Reputation Marketing Ninja. So anyway, I have my whiteboard behind me. And I'm going to use that as a uh, kind of stir my mind here, what we're going to talk about. You know, we're going to talk about content marketing. We're going to talk about being uh, gaining a little ground on Google. And uh, at the very end, I'm going to tie this into the t-shirt I'm wearing today, which is uh, all about knowing your walkers for uh, all you 22 million or so walking dead fans out there. Um, so anyway, let's, let's, let's dive into it right away. And also, what I got is a special treat for you. If you are a walking dead fan, I have my, uh, my best Rick Grimes impression. But I'm going to warn you, I'm going to tie it in to a marketing concept. And also, it's not very good, and it's really brief. So stay tuned, that's at the end, my best Rick Grimes impression. So, all right, anyway, let's talk about content. What I often tell clients that I'm working with when it comes to content is, um, is you have two ways to uh, get content produced for your website or even on your ongoing content marketing, meaning adding to your news area, your blog area, or obviously feeding your social media beast. So those two ways to get content are to obviously have somebody else who has done some research on your business or knows your business well enough uh, or has at least a, form, a format and a framework, they can actually go ahead and uh, produce content for you. Uh, and sometimes, like in our case, we'll do that kind of on a one-shot basis, meaning if we're creating a website for one of our clients, or say we're redoing a website, uh, we'll always go in there and edit the content, just give it a fresh set of eyes and our perspective, and then obviously look for the client's approval on that, and then, uh, and then bring it into the new site. Or maybe there's no content at all, so it has to be created. Well, we'll, we'll, we will write content for clients. We do it several times in a month. Um, and you know, you do some research, you research the industry, and you produce something that I always say is about, well, I always tell a client, it's about 80% complete. Meaning it still needs you, the business owner, the marketing manager, whoever you are in that company, to go in and make those final touches, all right? So you always have to be the end game on your content. But here's the good news, you shouldn't struggle with it. When it comes to getting content out there to you for your website, what you need to really think about first is you gotta have empathy with your end buyer. Um, so if you're selling what you're selling with any success, which is the only reason why we'd be talking to you, right? Um, you're selling what you're selling, you're having some success, you have to put yourself one uh, into a, a massive state of empathy. Then what you have to do is you have to think like your end buyer or your end user. And then all you have to do is really communicate to them the information that will help them make an informed decision. And, and that, that's what really creates content for your website or what we call the sales copy or the sales pages of your website. So you can go in with a good perspective, a lot of empathy, and tell the story. And then the most important thing is you bring it to a close and you give them some sort of call to action. But the good news is content does not have to be a struggle. But remember, you have, you have two, uh, two ways to get content. One, hire a professional copywriter or do it yourself. Or third option is, you know, just sit there and struggle with it and never get any good content up. But you do need content. Written content makes up the building blocks of your entire web presence. Written content makes up the building blocks of a video. It makes up the building blocks of your social media presence. Content is a big deal and you need to own it, and you need to handle it, and you need to take responsibility for it, all right? You need to set, a, set yourself a deadline. If you have a, a website remodel going on, you gotta set yourself a deadline to say, I'm either gonna approve this content set, sent to me from my copywriter, my marketing people, my web people, or I'm gonna create some of this stuff, and then get a second set of eyes. I love doing that. I love actually giving my clients my set of eyes. I've written content for, I don't know, 50 different industries, and I've written six books, and thousands, I guess, of articles over time. So I love to write. I love to actually just put myself into what I call Homer Simpson mode, right? I look at the, I look at the web content or I look at the, uh, the sales letter, whatever it is, and I say, is it simple? Can I understand it? But content's a big deal and you need to, you need to rein that in. You need to take ownership of it, take some responsibility for it. Hopefully I've given you a few things to think about. All right, let's move on here So because we have to wrap up. Next thing. Bing, Microsoft's Bing, awesome. They're kind of make, they're making some ground. I think they gained about four or five percent in the overall search market. Google's down from about sixty-seven percent, controlling the entire all the online searches, down to about I think uh, was it sixty-two percent. So you can fact check those numbers. Like I said, Bing gained about five percent. Now here's the thing: Bing actually powers most of uh, Yahoo's search results. So, so those organic listings that come up if you're using Yahoo to, as your search engine, 
uh, Bing actually powers a large percentage of those. So how the search engine wars break down is about Google has about 62 or 3 percent now and then you have Bing and Yahoo properties making up the rest. But the reason why Bing is very relevant is because they power a certain portion of Yahoo search results. So just keep that in mind, optimize for Bing, it's a little bit of a different animal for Google. When we're doing a search engine project, our goal, our objective is Google, Yahoo, and Bing because Yahoo's formula is a little different. They're layering some things on top of Bing's technology that they licensed from Microsoft. That's a 10 year deal that was struck back in 2009, so it's got a few more years to go. Um, and and, really, and when, you, when you're talking about Bing and search and Yahoo, you can't help but mention Yahoo. So here's what I think about Yahoo. One day they're going to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. They're thinking about buying Foursquare, the uh, location check-in app. So Yahoo's got a lot of things going on. They're pulling in Yelp's data. They're supposed to be getting rid of Yahoo Local, but yet Yahoo Local is still there. Uh, what I recommend is obviously optimize for Yahoo, optimize for Bing, claim the Yahoo listing. And that's about, about, that's about all you can do. To expect to probably get a whole lot of reviews from Yahoo Local for your business page. Probably not going to happen because Yahoo's engagement is really low. All right, So maybe Yahoo will figure out what they want to be when they grow up. We'll see how that works out. All right, now, on the topic of one of my favorite shows, don't worry. I'll bring back the, uh, the, you know, the button shirts and the sport jackets and all that. You know, okay, you know, I, I can be a little unprofessional at times. You know, whatever, forgive me. Or not, I don't care, whatever it is, whatever you gotta do, what you gotta do. So here I am doing this professional blog post in my Know Your Walkers Walking Dead t shirt. I mean, it's an awesome show, isn't it? Really awesome show. I can't get my wife to watch it with me. She really thinks it's all about like zombies or something. It really isn't. They're called walkers, by the way, not zombies. All right, so anyway, here we go. Before I get to my Rick Grimes impression, which is not very good, I wanna talk to you about the zombie thing or Walking Dead thing. If you pay attention to business news and tech news, I'm a, I'm a junkie of both. Business news, small business news, tech news, just, just I'm a junkie overall for all that information. I soak it up every day like a sponge. So it's funny though, because the term zombie is used a lot, right? So if you, if you were paying attention to, to the foreclosure market in real estate, uh, they are called these houses zombie houses. Houses that were foreclosed on, the occupants had moved out but they're just sitting there. They're like walking dead houses. They're zombies. We gotta do something with these, all these zombie properties. Whatever, so the zombies toss around a lot. Mobile apps, same thing. There's millions of apps, right? Published in the Apple App Store, or Google Play Store, whatever it is. Um, and not all of them get downloaded, right? Not all of them make it. Not, some of them are just kind of walking dead, so they call them zombie apps. <laughs> so, anyway, here's what I think. I'm gonna own the term zombie websites. Holy cow, we come across so many of those either uh, through some of our efforts reaching out to folks who we think we can help or just when we get inquiries coming our way with websites that are just walking dead. They haven't, they haven't moved, they haven't been touched in years. It's really sad. Time has passed them by. They're just, they're just decaying. Ugh, horrible stuff, all right? Zombie websites. And Google, Google's going to start cracking down. I know I've been beating this drum. And I'm doing the whole zombie thing last couple weeks. They're com it's coming April 21st, this week, right? As I record this, they're going to be... Now, I would say a zombie website is definitely one that doesn't look good on a mobile device or is not built on a responsive platform. When we redo your website, let's do that responsive so we're done. We handle all screens one shot. But yeah, they're going to be cracking down. You know, on those smartphone searches, tagging it as mobile friendly. So I thought it was very appropriate to wear my Walking Dead t-shirt. So here's my impersonation of Rick, my impre whatever you want to call it. So I'm the Rick around here in my company, right? But anyway, so you need to be the Rick in your company, or maybe you can be the Carol and the Daryl, who knows? We all need a Carol and a Daryl. So here it goes. So um, Rick was, in, in one of the last episodes where they got into the what, that, that community, Alexandria, whatever, Rick was trying to tell these people that their luck will eventually run out. And they have to be tough. You have to be tough to survive in that new world. And he said something like, I'm gonna blow this, I know it. Your, your luck is gonna run out. There it is, that's all I got. I'm horrible, go back and play that again. See if you remember the clip. Your luck's gonna run out. So that's the same thing with your web presence. You know, if, it's, if it's, you're just letting it die, eventually your luck's gonna run out. You're gonna lose a bid because the website sucks, is the way it is. You're gonna 
turn somebody off, turn a prospect off because the website's bad. Eventually, your luck will run out. Alright, it's Mike D for Mike T's Marketing Mix. Don't hold that against me. I've never been to acting school. I have taken a couple improv classes. Please, don't hold that against me. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you on the next recording. Talk to you soon.